This video is to cover all of the equations in the second AS physics exam, electrons, waves and photons. So the first equation you learn in module 1 is the charge is equal to current multiplied by time, which we remember is the quit equation. Um, this also gives us a definition of 1 ampere, which is that 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per second. The second equation in module 1 is the i nave equation, which is that current is equal to the number density of the conduction electrons multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the wire times the mean drift velocity multiplied by the charge on one electron. The next equation comes from module 2. So in module 2, the first equation that's going to appear a couple of times is the equation for energy or for work done, which is equal to voltage multiplied by the charge. Now this equation provides us with two things. Firstly, it provides us with uh, an expression for 1 volt. So 1 volt is equal to 1 joule per coulomb. So we relate voltage to the energy. Um, and this equation also appears in uh, quantum physics in a slightly different form where the charge is a specific charge, it's the charge on an electron. So if I know the potential difference through which any electron is accelerated, I automatically know its energy. The next equation is Ohm's law, which is V, or V equals IR. Now that equation is important because Ohm's law is that voltage is proportional to current when uh, external conditions such as temperature remain constant. So that equation is going to be um, used uh, a lot in your exam. We can also substitute that equation into the power equation. So power, there's a couple of power equations. The most basic one is power um, is energy divided by time. It's the rate of work done. So we can have a special equation for power that we can derive from that um, which is the power in an electric circuit is um, current times voltage and then by substituting in Ohm's law for I and V we get two more expressions for this which is that voltage squared over R is equal to power that's when we substitute in for I and also I squared R when we substitute in for V we also get the equation for resistivity which is the um, resistance multiplied by area divided by the length of the wire is equal to the resistivity of the wire. Linked to this, in this topic, we also get that resistance is directly proportional to temperature, which by following through the process for proportionality, we can get that R is equal to KT. If I then um, rearrange this to give me R over T is equal to K, where K is some constant, if I've got an initial set of conditions and a final set of conditions, I end up with the expression R1 over T1 is equal to R2 over T2. The only other equation that can come out of this from module 2 is that we can have that we can rearrange power um, uh, with PIV to get the uh, quite a new equation for work done or energy, which is that that is PIV multiplied by time, which is just a rearrangement. The equations from module three are firstly the equation for um, EMF um, related to the internal resistance of a battery, which is the potential difference plus the current multiplied by little r, where little r is the internal resistance. This comes from an expression which is that the EMF is equal to uh, the re resistance um, of the overall circuit plus the resistant internal resistance because we've got resistors in series which is our second equation. So resistors in series are added together as R1 plus R2 and that by considering this expression we end up with this equation. The next one is uh, the potential divider equation which is that the voltage out is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 multiplied by the voltage in. Um, in order to understand this expression you need to be able to relate it to the diagram which is that in a potential divider, we're going to split the voltage over a component. So we have to have 
two um, resistors, and um, these could be one could be a thermistor, one could be an LDR, uh, and then we have a voltage coming out. Now that could have a component um, in, so we got V in and V out, and then this one would be R1 and this would be R2. So this equation provides us with the potential difference over R2. If I wanted an expression for the potential difference over R1, I would put R1 at the top of the equation. The final equation for electricity is 1 over R um, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And this is the equation for resistors in parallel. All of the other equations come from module um, 4 and module 5 for quantum physics. So for the first wave equation, we have the, the wave speed is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. Now, frequency is related to the period of a wave by 1 over t. So t is the period, which is the length of one wave. Frequency is the number of waves per second. You don't get given that equation in your exam, so you do need to remember it. We then get to uh, Malice's law, um, which is that I, which is the intensity, is equal to uh, I max or I naught, which is the maximum starting intensity multiplied by cos squared theta. Now, you won't be asked to do a mathematical calculation with this equation. However, you will be asked to state it and know what each part of this equation means. Again, you're not given that equation, so you need to remember it. We then get to Young's double slit experiment, which is that lambda is equal to AX over D, where A is the where you start, so that is your slit separation, X is your fringe separation, remember X is where you end your journey, and D is the distance between the screen and the slits. Following on from that, you get the diffraction grating equation, which is uh, n lambda is equal to d sine theta, where n is the order, so the fringe that we are discussing, uh, lambda is the wavelength, d is the distance between the slits on the diffraction grating. So often you might get told, for example, um, that you have 500 um, slits um, per <coughs> millimeter, um, and you want to know how what the distance is between them. So what you need to do is you need to do um, for one millimeter, which is 0 0.01 meters, how many uh, five times 500 will go into that and that will give you your distance um, between each of your individual um, slits. Um, which in this case would be uh, 5 times uh, 10 to the minus uh, 6. Um, the next equation that we have in waves is um, uh, comes from quantum. So in quantum physics we have that energy is directly proportional to frequency which leads us to um, the Planck equation where h is Planck's constant, e is the energy, and f is the frequency. Now often we might have energy given to us in electron volts or in joules, so you need to know the conversion between electron volts and joules. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So to go between, so to go that way, you have to um, times by that number, and to go that way, you divide. We can then substitute in the wave speed equation into this to give us that energy is equal to hc over lambda, where c is the speed of light, um, because we're talking about electromagnetic waves when we're using this equation. Um, we then have the equation for the photoelectric effect, which is that e, which can be equal to hf um, and hc over lambda, is equal to phi, which is the work function, plus half mv squared which is the maximum kinetic energy. Remember, if you're rearranging this equation, remember it's a plus, so you have to take away first. We then um, can uh, use another equation that we've talked about before related to the maximum kinetic energy, which we can say that if I'm accelerating an electron through a potential difference, its energy will be equal to EV, so its kinetic energy will be equated to that. So we can 
um, equate those two expressions to give us this equation, um, which is important to remember. So if you're given a potential difference, you automatically know the velocity of the electron because E is constant as the charge on an electron and M is the mass of the electron, which again is given to you in the data book. So you, if you know one of these, you automatically know the other. We've then got uh, uh, de Bruges equation, which is that uh, the wavelength is proportional to the momentum. So wavelength of anything is equal to Planck's constant divided by its momentum, so mv. And again, if you've got an electron here, this could be the mass of an electron. So remember that's in your data booklet.